So in the same way that we spoke about displacement versus time, we can look at the graph for velocity versus time. Except now our y-axis is no longer displacement, but it's velocity. And let's say our velocity is given in units, meters per second. And let's say our x-axis, the time, is given in seconds. Now when we spoke about displacement versus time, we said that our slope indicates our instantaneous velocity. And that's because by definition, velocity is change in displacement or displacement versus change in time. Now we're talking about change in velocity versus change in time. And that's by definition our acceleration. So whenever we talk about the graph or the slope of velocity versus time graph, our slope indicates the instantaneous acceleration of our object. So let's look at our object's motion from time equals zero to time equals 30. In other words, what happens to the motion of our object on this time interval? So at time equals zero, our object is already moving at some velocity. And that is indicated by the fact that the y-intercept at time equals zero is 15 meters per second. So when the time is zero, our velocity of the object is 15 meters per second, positive. And let's say positive is in this direction. So initially, our object is already moving in this direction with a velocity of 15 meters per second. But what happens from time equals, say, 0 to time equals 5 seconds, right? Our velocity begins to decrease. And in fact, it decreases all the way down to this point. At time equals 0, our velocity is 0. So that means when our object is moving in this direction, it must accelerate in the opposite direction. So it's decelerating. And that's indicated by this downward constant slope. So a constant downward or negative slope indicates a decreasing velocity. And that means where our acceleration is constant, but it's in the opposite direction of our velocity. So our velocity, our object is moving in this direction, and the time equals 20 seconds, it slows down to a speed or a velocity of zero. Now, at which point it changes direction and it begins moving in this direction. And that's indicated by the fact that if you go from 20 seconds to 30 seconds, our velocity begins to increase, but in the negative direction, in the opposite direction. So our object is accelerating this way as it's moving this way. At time equals zero, it stops, it reverses directions, and it begins accelerating this way and moving in the same direction until it goes to time equals 30 seconds. So, now let's look at this interval. From 30 seconds to approximately 40 seconds, our slope is zero. We have a constant but zero slope. And a zero slope means our instantaneous acceleration at any given point in time on this time interval is zero. So if, if our slope is zero, our velocity is not changing. Now, that doesn't mean that our velocity is zero. We still have a velocity, and we have a velocity that's negative. So that means we're still moving in this direction. But we're moving with a constant velocity. So we get to 40 seconds, and what happens at 40 seconds? Well, <coughs> at 40 seconds until 70 seconds, our slope is now positive. It's upward, and it's constant. So that means, once again, our object begins to accelerate at a constant slope. And now, when it's accelerating from this point to this point, it's moving in the negative direction. It's moving this way, but now it's accelerating in the opposite, in the reverse direction, until it reaches time equals 50. At time equals 50, the object stops once again a second time. The first stop was at 20 seconds. It stops, it reverses direction, and it begins moving in this direction. Its velocity begins to become positive, and it's accelerating in the same direction as it's moving, and it's accelerating at a, at a constant positive acceleration. So our velocity is changing uniformly. So when we get to time equals 70 seconds, what happens? 
Well, at 70 seconds, we have a changing slope. From, so from 70 seconds all the way down to 100 seconds, we have a changing slope. In other words, if we wanted to take our slope or to find our slope at any given point, we would have to approximate or we could use calculus. Now our slope, our line is not a constant, it's changing and that means our acceleration is also changing. Our acceleration is not constant. So when our object gets to 100 seconds, its velocity reaches zero. Now let's talk about what the area under our curve represents. Suppose we go from 0 seconds to 20 seconds. What does this area, this triangle, represent? Well, their area, say if I wanted to take this and shade this area in to represent its area, this guy represents our displacement of our object. In other words, when the object goes from 0 seconds to 20 seconds, it displaces or its displacement it is this area here. So if we want to find the displacement, we simply take 20. So since this is a triangle, base times height divided by 2 gives us the area. So 15 multiplied by 20 divided by 2 will give us 150. So 150 meters it is displaced. So in other words, when it goes from time equals 0 to time equals 20, it displaces 100 meters. It's distance in this case, because in this case our distance and displacement mean the same thing. Our displacement is 150, right? Because 20 divided by 2 gives us 10. 15 times 10 gives us 115 meters. So, and once again, when our object goes from 20 seconds to 30 seconds, what happens now? Well, remember, actually our object was moving in this direction. Then at 20 seconds, it stopped. It displaced a distance of 150 meters, and then it began moving backwards. So that means our displacement begins to decrease. And that's exactly what we see according to this. Note that if we want to find our displacement from 20 seconds to 30 seconds, our graph, the area we had to find, is now this shaded region here. And we take this positive number and we have to subtract it from this number because this indicates a negative displacement, a displacement in the opposite direction. So to find our displacement from this point to 30 seconds, we add this guy and then we subtract this guy. And if we want to find the total area, or the total displacement, we have to find the area of all these regions. So, this region, and this region. So we basically take these two regions, add them up, and then subtract this region from these two regions. And we will find our total displacement of our object. Now this did not work for displacement versus time. In displacement versus time graph, our area meant nothing, but in velocity versus time graph, the area does have a meaning and it gives us the displacement of our object.